Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is upsetting new information on the release of the giants. And I don't know that ex- upsetting is exactly the right word. It's maybe scary. Um, you know, there's there's not a lot of things that scare someone like myself who's been in Bible prophecy for 40 years, but this one concerns me. So I'm going to bring you some new information, and uh, I, I have to say, I, I think it'll shake you. It certainly shook me. First of all, all of this is really supposed to be motivating us to pray. So this Friday night, we are going to have a prayer service. This is not a Bible pl- uh, study. This is a prayer service. So here's how you join. You go to prophecyclub.com this Friday night from 7 to 10 p.m. CST. We're going to be broadcasting it live. There's no charge. Just go to the Prophecy Club website, and you can watch it. Now, we're going to need people praying. And the way this thing works is we'll set up the microphone. We'll have a few of our congregation there, but not all of them are going to come. And frankly, I forgot to mention it's Sunday. <clears throat> so a lot of them just simply don't know about it, which is all the more reason I need you to come in and pray this coming Friday night from 7 to 10. If you want to be a part of the prayer line, then yes, we do ask you to sign up. All you do is give your name and your email, and then you're in line. And then, you, so every five minutes, we will rotate to the next person, and we'll go from 7 to 10 p.m. And yes, I will have prayer topics up to kind of help you to know what to say, but we'll get into more of that as we get closer. This Friday evening, 7 to 10 Central Time, prayer. Yes, we want people watching and praying in agreement, but we also need people standing in line that are willing to go on Zoom and pray. Okay, so let's get on to our topic. First of all, if I jump into this without some review, if some folks that are watching, we have a lot of new people watching, then they'll raise eyebrows to us and say, what? So i got to give you a little bit of a background. Stay with me. Bet Stevens, back February 5th, 2021, had this dream. She says, I was asleep and I was taken out of my body to this place under the earth. I saw computers, then I felt a hand on my shoulder and a voice close behind me and said, Watch and take note. It is much to your advantage to know the truth. Take a closer look. Now, when someone comes and pulls you out of your body in the middle of the night, that's a little bit more than just a dream. And great servants of God do have this happen to them. And I personally believe that, yes, it really happened to her. She says, I could zoom in and out, and I've heard that before from many other people. I could zoom in and out, and I saw a black box with many knobs and controls. The voice spoke from behind me again, just like many of them have said, Demetri did and other ones. It will be a co- commanding voice. Excuse me. It says, it will be a commanding device for giants. Let me read that again. I could zoom in and out, and I saw a black box with many knobs and controls. The voice spoke again and said, it would be a commanding device for giants. He called them Nephilim. Now we're going to skip part of it. I saw cots and tables on wheels with bodies under covers. They were wheeled across the room, robots escorted in and out on tables. They were making robots. She's not the first one that saw something like this. This is only a confirmation. If you've been with us a while, you know what I'm talking about. They were making robots, high advanced technology robots. We're not talking about Terminator. We're talking about above Terminator. I saw men in white coats looking at the black box, turning knobs. I heard a shrill whistle. This would not be heard by regular human ears. I heard it because I was in the spirit, and I saw a vision like a TV screen, similar to a computer screen, and I saw giants appear on the screen. They looked human, yet their stance Their fierceness and their evil power radiated just from looking at the screen. It was not regular human power. This was beyond human. It was beyond human reasonable expectations. I saw enough to know that they are perfecting giants down in Antarctica. This will one day be revealed. This is coming to the earth. And I'm going to show you scripture for it in just a second. I know, I know. If you're like me, I mean, I avoided this whole giant's uh, theory for a long time because I thought, eh, you know, they're not really important. Well, yes, it is important. And yes, it relates to the Bible, specifically Bible prophecy, and specifically the last days. As a matter of fact, I'll say 
we're probably going to start seeing these in the next coming few years. The black machine moved quite slowly. All of a sudden, the screen went blank. And the Lord said, You have been given this vision to share precisely as you have heard and seen it. You are to give this precisely with no big explanations, just as you were shown. The Lord continued, Please pay attention now. I show you the seven thunders. In that moment, I heard such a crashing and bounce of thunder, bolts of lightning all around through the whole place. Massive crashing of thunder and lightning. I heard these words from the thunder and lightning. Okay, did you catch that? Okay, so the seven thunders are apparently talking to her in this dream. I heard these words from the thunder and lightning. It was a mixture of thunder and voices saying, Release the giants upon the earth. I'm going to say that again. This is so important. I cannot tell you. I mean, back in 2017, when I memorized the book of Revelation, I remember when I ran across this verse, I thought, okay, so where the Bible says, and I heard seven thunders utter their voices. When I heard the seven thunders utter their voice, well, I'm going to, I'm going to read it here in just a second. But anyway, I'll go ahead and quote it. I, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven say to me, seal up those things with the seven thunders uttered and write them not. So I've always wondered, what is it that the seven thunders uttered? Boom. Now we know. What the seven thunders uttered was, release the giants upon the earth. Stan, how do you know that? Because I've got in the mouth of two, three witnesses. I'm about to show you. Let's go on. So I put this out. This was, I don't know, four, five, six months ago. The very next day, I got this email to me. Well, here it is, 1-13-2022. This lady says, I received an email telling me of your Seven Thunders YouTube video. I received word from the Heavenly Father in 2018 about that as well and published it in my blog. This is what the Seven Thunders say. Release the giants. So I went to her blog and I looked. Okay, is this true? Did she really get this back in 2018? And this was what was on her blog. The ravages of war would be seen when I released the giants to fulfill my wrath. The seven thunders you read were this word from my holy presence. Release the giants. So now we have two people that say what the seven thunders uttered is release the giants. Now, I don't know exactly when they'll be released, but my guess is, based upon everything I know, it's not far down the road. And that's some of the startling information I'm about to bring you. Now, as you recall, and I'm not going to read all this, but Daniel chapter 3 Remember, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He saw a big, giant image or a statue. And then, instead of realizing that God had spoken to him, instead, he decided he was going to make an image, and he required everybody to fall down and worship that image. Now, the interesting part of that image is that image was three score cubits high. And what's three score? That's 60, so that's a six. And then they played six instruments, and it was also six, what was the other six? There was 666 having to do with that image. And he required everybody to fall down and worship that, that image. And right now, they are handing around, passing around from city to city, a big image. And I intended to look up see how tall it was. But there's a very good possibility that that same image, or an image like that, is about to be passed around once again. The image of the beast. It causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark, or in the right hand or the forehead, and the no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. And shall in that same hour be cast into the midst of burning fiery furnace if they don't worship the image. So giants and worshiping giants are closely related. Now let's get on to, and let me remind you again, Friday night, 7 to 10, go to prophecyclub.com. You can watch it and pray with us. And you can also register just your name and email, and you can also be in the prayer line. Five minutes to pray to the world. Now, here's the new information. This was just sent to me this morning. It says, giants have been in hibernation in stasis chambers. Never heard that before. I don't know what a stasis chamber was, not until I read this. Hibernation in stasis chambers for thousands of years, and they are now awakening. And are being sought out by elite military forces, they are awakened giants, are allegedly being captured and held hostage by the powerful group, uh, global elite groups, which call them Moloch and Ball worshippers, that do not want the rest of humanity to learn the truth. No, not yet. 
Okay, so apparently these giants are now, and most recently here, in the process of waking up around the earth. And how long they've been, how many thousands of years they've been asleep, I do not know. But it's about to tell us they're in the process of waking up. And as they wake up, they're immediately being captured and not being released to the public yet. There will be a time. In conclusion, there is broad agreement between Good, Quail, and Cobra that awakened giants are being actively sought for by this Moloch and Ball worshippers. And special military forces all over the world, when captured, are taken to secret detention facilities. Not allowed to interact with the general public yet. This elite U.S. military locate the giants, roughly a 12-foot giant. U.S. special forces at one time ran across this one of the giants in Afghanistan. I heard the story. I read the book. I've talked to Steve Quayle about it. And there's too much evidence to say it's just bunk. I believe it actually happened. Claimed the giant had killed nine members of an elite team that they were sent to capture it. So they sent a second team. Only this team walked up, and they had some really heavy artillery, and they killed the giant. And I've, I've got the book. I've seen a picture of the giant. It probably happened. But that's not our point today. Let's go on. Secret Space Program whistleblower Corey Good was among the first to publicly disclose the existence of stasis chambers that were holding perfectly preserved giants for thousands of years. And in August 4, 2015 interview on the popular show, discussed how he had access to information on smart glass pads. Now, apparently this is some way that they can see past, present, and future. Smart glass pads during his covert service about these sleeping giants and the technology of the stasis chambers that were preserving them. Skipping down, there were beings that they found underneath the surface of the earth, usually underneath mountains, burial mountains, Indian burial mounds that were not dead, but were quite alive. They called them stasis beings. <clears throat> and it turned out that they had used a technology that had been there long prior, and this group that they called the ancient builder race. So it didn't put the beings in stasis that a lot of us would think of as a being frozen, but it changed the way they experienced time. They would probably go to sleep for maybe 20 minutes, but maybe it was 30,000 years would pass by. Now, as you recall, Matthew 24, this is Jesus speaking, said, As in the days of Noah's, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, what were they doing in the days of Noah? Moving fast, I've got a lot to cover. Essentially, that the sons of God, here, let me show you. The sons of God saw the daughters of men. They came down and took wives. Their offspring were giants. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men and bare children, they were mighty men which were old, and that Hebrew, or that word in the Hebrew there means eternal, meaning when the sons of God mated with the daughters of men, their offspring were giants, and they weren't dying. They were eternal. That's one of the other reasons God had to destroy, because he had to destroy everything on the earth, because their ways was corrupted. And it was not just sin. It was sin, but it wasn't just sin. They, ha they were mingling their DNA. And this is probably where things like mermaids, half man, half fish, uh, centaurs, half man, half horse. A lot of that is probably true. And he's saying, this verse says they're doing it again today. If you believe we're in the last days, and I think you do, then this verse is now in place. It's saying that this is happening now. Now, I'm about to show you something startling. I've got a better picture of this. I've seen it in the past. I've actually seen a video, and it's really high-resolution video. And essentially, it's a picture of one of these giants that they found. And they say, <laughs> this article says, was alive. It's like one of these suspended animation. Yeah, I mean, we see that in all kinds of future movies, you know, where they get into this uh, capsule and they can sleep for thousands of years, wake up, and they're just fine, haven't aged. This is an up-close close picture of the thing that was covering his private areas. This was over his chest. Now, there's other high-resolution photographs, but it would take me hours and hours to go back and find them. You can probably find something like this on the Internet. But let's go back to the article. They saw these very tall be beings, very large giant humans with reddish beards. These tall, red-headed, red-beard groups were in Europe, 
South and North America, and apparently at one time, before the last Ice Age, apparently, they had a very large area that they ruled. Stasis chambers had been found around the world. Some were still operating with different modern human groups that had learned to use the technology while others had been damaged and the beings in stasis had died as a result. What we're saying here is yeah, if you really believe we're in the last days, then you also got to believe Jesus when he said, as in the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And in the days of Noah, they had sons of man coming down and making hybrids, half fallen being and half human. They were giants and they were eternal and they weren't dying. Okay, if they're eternal, then does it make sense that they could have been put into some kind of a suspended state, a sleep state, and they didn't die? I don't know how many thousands of years old, but eternal means eternal. Okay, so maybe they escaped the flood. Maybe they didn't drown in the flood. Maybe they were in these, I don't know. And by the way, I have to also give a disclaimer. I can't prove this, but then if you think about it, if I really had knowledge that this was true, if I really could prove this was true, if I'd really been there, then they would probably be seeking to kill me. So you're probably not going to find anybody that can prove what is being said here that still have a beating heart. So what we have to do is look at the Bible, and we say, does this line up with the Bible? And the answer today is, sadly, yes. Yes, it does. Now, there's more. So let's keep going. Stasis chambers, sleeping ancient giants, ready to awaken, are secretly located and imprisoned by the global elite cried with a loud voice when a lion roareth. When he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. When the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up those things which seven thunders uttered and write them not. Well, now we know. What was said was, release the giants. Apparently, by the way, I've got two different people now that say that the seven thunders were saying, release the giants. Okay, so what are the, you think these people are going to come out here and they're just going to help mankind. These are probably evil giants that have, are used to ruling and dominating the world. And so they come out of these things. They're released upon the earth. And it could be very, very bad. I'll give you an example here. This, uh, I, I believe it was a dream. Headline, Horrible Giant Defeated in the Name of Jesus, May 15, 2016. He and his best friend Chase were out at our chicken coop, closing for the night. Suddenly, a giant came out of the woods. I want to believe it's a dream, but what if it's true? Menacing, wearing animal skin for the clothing, with dirty long hair and beard. He beat on the metal roof of the chicken coop. Then he stomped out the fire and hit my friend on the head and knocked him out. Reed bravely jumped onto the giant, but was instantly flung off to the ground, so he got up and ran in terror back into our house to get help. He grabbed a semi-automatic rifle, extra clip, ran back outside the chicken coop, and basically emptied the, chi the clip into the, the giant. But he continued to drag Chase into the woods. In other words, he was acting like he wasn't even getting shot. And I'm going to show you another dream just like that in a second. So Reed turned off the rifle, turned the rifle around, and began beating him with the butt of the rifle. Giant let go of the Chase's leg, but only to strike Reed with a black backhanded slap that sent him flying several feet. So he got back up and shouted in a loud voice, The blood of Jesus is against you. In his name, I command you to let him go. The giant immediately stopped dragging Chase and made some strange, loud groaning sounds with a deep voice, then dropped down to the ground and appeared to be dead. Reed picked up Chase, who was still unconscious, and carried him into the house. I want to believe that's a dream. Because I want to believe that they're not here yet. But... Maybe they are. Let's go on. Lance Woods, 2018, had the same dream three times over seven days. Soldiers were coming through my neighborhood. Many homes had been vacated for a long time. The soldiers were rounding up people that remained. Those who didn't get out of the truck without incident or tried to run were simply shot and killed immediately. Bodies were left where they fell. I woke up to screaming and bullhorns. I looked out my window and saw the soldiers hitting one home at a time. I woke my 17-year-old daughter and her friend. We snuck out of the house being quite staying downwind as the soldiers listened, listened, listened. 
the soldiers had super hearing, super smell, and could see in the dark without night vision. Do you want to try to compete against that? Seven, eight foot tall, super hearing, super smell, probably run like a deer, see in the dark? No wonder they ruled. No reasoning, emotion, or empathy. They were programmed and followed their orders. Many people shot the soldiers, but to no effect. They healed instantly, right before their eyes. The only way to kill them was with a headshot with a high-caliber rifle. We could not talk or make any noise while we made our way down to the embankment of the river. We wanted to get in the water to help mask our smell. I slipped down the embankment, making noise and cut my shin. I remember the sound of the leaves crackling and the smell of the dirt as I slid down in the embankment. The girls looked at me in fear, knowing the soldier heard that noise. They quietly slid into the water. I froze, hiding behind a tree, as one soldier came listening and sniffing and investigating the noise. He was six and a half or seven foot tall with muscles like a weightlifter and covered in a metallic battle-type armor, overlapping, overlapping like an armadillo. His eyes were red, his face had a beastly humanoid appearance. Let me, let me just say, you know, I want to believe this is all fictitious. I want to believe this is just a bad dream. I want to believe this is not going to come. But when you got Bible prophecy backing it up, not just one place, but several places, and we've got several people saying the same things here in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established, I'm going to ask you to send this video out to your friends. And yes, we're off of YouTube. And by the way, I'm not going to get back on YouTube until after the election, November 9th. So if you are watching this, the only way you're going to hear it is they're probably going to have to have you send it to them. So send it to them. He scanned the area. He was ready to shoot to protect my... I was ready to shoot my, to protect my daughter. I knew the shot would draw the other soldiers and I would be dead, but my daughter would live. The soldier turned and simply walked away. Brothers and sisters, it is time for us to pray for our nation. This Friday night, 7 to 10 CST, go to prophecyclub.com. Friday night, this Friday night, that's August the 19th. Join us, watch and pray. If you want to be a part of the prayer, then you sign up. I also encourage you to get some food. We've got, I don't know, what, 14, 15, 16 different dreams and visions of people that say that there's a food shortage coming. So here's what you do. I'd recommend you go first and get a machine package. This is what allows you to take the wheat berries, 30 seconds, grind them into flour, put it into a bread machine. Here's the thing that grinds the wheat. This is the bread machine. Put them in a bread machine with six other ingredients. Push a button, which I'm making right now in the kitchen here. Push a button. Two hours, 20 minutes later, you got nice, hot, wonderful tasting whole wheat bread that's very good for you. And get this. Most of the other long-term storage places cost you nine to $10,000 to feed one person for one year. Do you get that? About $10,000 to feed one person for one year. At Joseph's Kitchen, you can do it for about $1,000. $1,000 to feed one person for a year at Joseph's Kitchen. Here's how you do it. You get the machine package. You got to have that, and that's everything you need. That's the beakers, the knife, the bread cutter, everything. Then you decide how much food you want to have. You want to have food, two people one year, four people one year, six people one year, and they've got it in stock and shipping now. So you can get it in a few days. Well, that is unless you're in Hawaii or Timbuktu someplace. Go to josephskitchen.com, josephskitchen.com. Also, you may be thinking, yeah, well, what do we do if the electricity goes out, if we got to have electricity to make the, the, the bread? Well, they also are now offering a bread solar generator on a pre-order basis. So, yes, we've got that problem solved. And I'm also going to be offering another very, very nice unit. This is about $3,200. The next unit is going to be in the ballpark of around ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000. Next thing I recommend you do is go to cornerstoneassetmetals.com. We had only been with them, oh, two or three months. And I called their office one day. I said, this is Stan Johnson with Prophecy Club. Oh, my goodness, Prophecy Club. We love Prophecy Club people. I was shocked. <laughs> she says, 
your Prophecy Club people, we have people from other all over who call us. She said, but we love Prophecy Club people because they got their eyes open, their ears open. They know what's going on out there. We love Prophecy Club people. Send us Prophecy Club people. Also, I recommend you go to prophecyclub.com and get all five of my books. Now, I didn't write this one, but I did organize it. You get How Pre-Trib One, Daniel, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, Miss the Mark, and you get one set of each of them, which is actually 40 books for a gift of $100 at prophecyclub.com. And if you need to have, if you don't have this right here on your car, you'll want to get it. This is an EMP shield device. This one goes on a car. All you have to do, it's simple. They have videos show you, but you just put the black wire on the black side of your battery. The green wire attaches to the body of the car and the red wire attaches to the red side of the battery. And then the back peels off. You don't even have to put any holes in your car. That peels off. You stick it someplace under your hood. It takes about 10 minutes for us people that are not mechanically inclined. Probably people mechanically inclined more like five minutes to put it on and then you're good to go. If you'll go to empshield.com, put in the uh, promo code PROPHECY, you get a $50 discount for everything that you order there. Good deal. Good deal. Click like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend.